All right, thanks for sharing your garden with us. We're going to move from a butterfly garden to a butterfly center. I'm joined by a couple of folks from Mission, Texas, to talk about the National Butterfly Center. And it's, this is going to be a real treat, folks. I think you're in for something special. Thanks so much for being here. Thank we you. have Mariana Trevino Wright, who's the executive director of the National Butterfly Center, and Max Munoz, who's the guy who takes care of the center. He's the manager of the grounds. Welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's, oh, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, tell me about the center. You've been around for a number of years. I'm just learning about it, though. Well, the National Butterfly Center is a project of the North American Butterfly Association. Okay. And they chose Mission Texas for its prime location. It is uh, home to more species, the lower Rio Grande Valley is, more species of butterflies than anywhere else in the United States anywhere else in North America. The center's been there for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. and we have a beautiful visitor's pavilion that um, will be three years old in the fall. Okay, mm -hmm. so a national center in Mission, Texas. Uh, and I know that uh, people already travel from all over the world to come to the Rio Grande Valley to see birds, so this seems like a, a beautiful compliment. It really is, and, and the birds come through the central U.S. flyway, mm -hmm. which, of course, we're at the tip of. And what's the number one food for your migratory songbirds? Hmm, let me guess. <laughs> Caterpillars and right. butterflies. Right, so, right. of course, they're following the food trail. Oh, interesting, very mm -hmm. interesting. So, uh, and th actually, the migra and the, um, many butterfly species are migratory, right, Max? Correct, yes. You will find a whole lot of them there and coming from many different places, north and south. Right, okay, so many of the species, again, are migratory, so the birds are following those there. Yeah. But a real special treat for people uh, who love butterflies and are, are from more northerly parts of the United States, there are lots of endemic uh, tropical species there, right? There are, of the 700 species of butterflies in North America, about 300 of those species can be found in the lower Rio Grande Valley. Okay. And over 200 of those species have been photographed and identified at the National Butterfly Center on our 100 acres. Okay, now there's some really special critters here that, and I know I've seen a handful of these in the past. But uh, there are some remarkable species. And I want to let's just give people a little taste of some of the the exotics, if you will, the okay. ones that uh, you will only find in the lower Rio Grande Valley. There's a species that uh, I was looking at some images and a, a clear winged clear butterfly. Wings. That is a tropical butterfly. Mm -hmm. That is one butterfly you will not find in the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, we have other ones. Uh, one, one of our special ones is um, malachite, for mm -hmm. example. That is one also that you'll see in the lower Rio Grande Valley, mm -hmm. and another one that you won't see up, you know, north of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the malachite is, and this is an interesting species, really colorful and a big species too, right? It is a very large brush foot, like a monarch. So mm -hmm. it's going to be about a four-inch butterfly. Okay. And it's green and black instead of orange and black. Okay. And it's a woodland butterfly, so it's perfectly camouflaged. Okay. Hide out in the hackberries down it there does. in South Texas, right? It does. Okay. And uh, the the clear wing obviously lives up to its name, and uh, uh, really remarkable. I, I, I guess this is camouflage at its ultimate, in a way. A transparent butterfly, yes. A stealth <laughs> butterfly, <laughs> right? It is, but we, you know, with our our place in the there near the Gulf of Mexico, mm -hmm. and the way the winds and the tropical storms blow and all, mm -hmm. we do when we get southern winds, we get these subtropical and tropical species that have right. maybe been blown off course like the Orion Cecropian and the Guatemalan Crackers. So there are lots of really cool butterflies that you can't find anywhere else uh, other than going maybe to those countries or to the tropics, Central right. America. Well, I will say that uh, I've had some beautiful experiences looking at butterflies in my life, but uh, none more beautiful than spending time in the lower Rio Grande Valley during the migration season. You can drive through literally clouds of yes. these guys. <laughs> or pull over and not drive uh, through uh, them. Yeah, the, <laughs> preferably, <laughs> yes. So, but uh, uh, just amazing, and, uh, and there's so much that we can do to help these migrants migrators too and that we all want to spend some time talking about that. Let's talk about the migrators now because there's some perils involved in migration that we want to really focus in on but lots of species of course the monarchs right? The monarchs, the swallowtails, the sulfurs, 
um, the American snouts, which mm -hmm. are very, very common, mm -hmm. buckeyes. There are many species that migrate south because butterflies are cold-blooded species. Mm -hmm. So they need uh, sun and heat to uh, have the energy they need to feed and to breed. Right. Now, Max, I, w I was surprised to learn this, but uh, butterflies don't just migrate back, say, for example, the famous example of the monarchs, they don't fly all the way from Mexico to the United States and then back. <laughs> It takes generations. It does. Um, the monarch will take, let's say, just take off from Canada, arrive in, uh, say, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. They lay their eggs there on a milkweed plant, and uh, once the caterpillar hatches and turns into a butterfly, it takes off from there. Mm -hmm. They have their own little GPS system, which I don't <laughs> understand yet, but they have their own. So uh, you get somebody hopping from New, New Jersey to North Carolina or et cetera, it just kind of mm -hmm. they take hops by the generation. Mm -hmm. they That's do. fascinating. Now, um, a lot of people are concerned about butterfly populations, particularly those that are migrating through the United States right now, because they, in many ways they're an indicator species, right? They are. They're a very sensitive environmental indicator to the health of our, of our flora, of our plants. Mm -hmm. And you know we've had drought for many years in the United States. One of the devastating consequences of drought and development is the disappearance of native plant species. Sure, sure. So when the plants disappear, the butterflies, really there's no food source and, and they're stuck in a very real way. Are we seeing declining populations? We're seeing reports of declines and mm -hmm. you know every year the North American Butterfly Association conducts counts three mm -hmm. times a year and these are open to enthusiasts and naturalists to participate. You can find your counts on the NABA website, okay. join those and they're collecting data. How many butterflies, how many species, how many of each, of each species to try to gather enough data to ascertain patterns and causes whether it's climate, development, mm -hmm. seasonal issues, and uh, really there is some science behind it, but I don't know that anything's been determined. Okay, well, and there's a lot we know that we can do as gardeners that can help, right, Max? Yes, uh, one of the things that I've noticed a lot is that a lot of people take the plants that we use there in the center as weeds, mm -hmm. and they end up destroying them, getting rid of them. I don't know how I many homes are out there with real nice turf, but no plants, no plants that the butterflies really need. Right, right. So choosing native plants that provide larval food, which means the caterpillars are going to chew them yes. down. Yes, and that's, that's one that um, <laughs> we've had some interesting stories about. Mm -hmm. I've had uh, um, ladies who create their own gardens come over to me and say, I want a, a, a plant that will attract a lot of butterflies. But then they come back to me and they say, look, it's blooming really nice, but these Little worms keep eating it, <laughs> and I destroy those worms, but I never get any butterflies. <laughs> well, you destroy the caterpillar itself, you're not going to get your butterflies. Right. Well, you brought a few plants with you that we can use as kind of examples yes. of uh, things that provide uh, sustenance for the butterflies. Immediately next to me is American Beautyberry. Now, I didn't know that this was a butterfly plant. Yes, it is. It actually serves as a, as a uh, berry for birds, mm -hmm. but when it does produce a very small flower, butterflies do love the nectar on that Okay, flower. so in, in the springtime when they bloom, uh, you can count on that. Now, now this r is a heliotrope. heliotrope. It looks like a little salvia here almost, mm -hmm. but uh, what's the common name for this one? That one's called, the. Uh, they call it a scorpion's tail. Scorpion's tail. Well, I can see why they do that with the curved uh, and it's racing here. Little bitty flowers that right. some of the smallest butterflies love. Okay, so heliotrope is another native. And then we have a couple of vines over here. Uh, there's a passion vine, and I know the passion vines are favorite food for many species, right? Yes, the gold fritillary for one example, mm -hmm. and it, uh, zebra heliconians, mm -hmm. they love this, this particular vine, and it's one that you should have at home. Right, well, the passion vines are beautiful, yes. and they're great additions to the garden, but again, you gotta, when the caterpillars <laughs> come, Grin and bear it, right? Yes, yes. It's important. Well, there's some other things that people can do, and not just to put out food, but the, our use of pesticides and, and, and fungicides, things like that, right? Yes, we have a nursery at the National Butterfly Center. Of course, our mission is plant native, and that the butterflies are connected to the plants. 
uh, very intimately. You know, certain course, caterpillars right. can only eat certain foods. Mm -hmm. And um, if you are buying those plants from a commercial grower, there's more and more in the news about those plants being treated um, with herbicides. And okay. those herbicides are designed to kill any weeds or native plant species mm -hmm. and to protect the plant from pests. Well, those worms or caterpillars are considered pests. Sure. So uh, we encourage everyone to buy local, to buy organic, to get to know your growers so that they can answer those questions about how the plants are treated, if at all, so that you're not growing plants that uh, not only don't attract mm -hmm. the pollinators, but actually harm them. Right. What about the use of genetically modified uh, crops? How is that impacting uh, butterflies? I we, we hear a lot about that. Well, the pollen from many of those plants has been altered, and butterflies are huge pollinators. Mm -hmm. Now, butterflies aren't going to go to corn, mm -hmm. but where those crops are growing and they're treated, um, all the weeds that might have grown up in those areas mm -hmm. are not going to be able to exist with those commercial crops. So uh, we're seeing a disappearance of native plant species as a result of all of the treatment of our, of our commercially grown crops. Well, you know, I know that our viewers here are going to want to do something positive about this. So, the, 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 you know, re reduction of the chemicals, increase the use of the native plants. They can learn a lot about this at a festival that's coming up. Tell me about the festival. Well, the 18th annual Texas Butterfly Festival is in Mission, Texas, November 2nd through the 5th. And it's um, four days of field trips and excursions uh, to renowned public lands like mm -hmm. Santa Ana, as you mentioned, and private lands, which people may never get the chance to see. So people in our community who have incredible gardens or incredible grounds, and you're going with uh, world-renowned trip guides and leaders. Okay. And so you can... Uh, encouraged to come okay. and see the Rio Grande Valley. Okay, that's the 18th annual uh, Texas Butterfly Festival. November 2nd through 5th. Which is peak migration season. Mm -hmm. All right, well, really, uh, it's been a thrill visiting with both of you. I love the energy that you bring to this, and of course, this is a favorite topic for gardeners across the nation. Uh, continued luck, and be best wishes uh, for the National Butterfly Center in Mission, Thank Texas. Thank you. Thanks for being here, and coming up next is our friend Daphne.